Hi there, I'm Ruben Cornell, music journalist, composer and host of the weekly YouTube and podcast show, The Samplecast. In this video tutorial, I'll be showing how to create a neoclassical piece suitable for film scoring from just a few of Native Instruments' most popular sample libraries. The aim here is to spend a few minutes quickly sketching out a piece for orchestra and piano with a few sound design elements combined to give it a modern edge. For this track, I'll be using Native Instruments Una Corda for the piano lines, their String Ensemble Essentials for the bulk of the string work, Woodwind Ensemble Essentials for some woodwind flourishes and a melody line, and Thrill to provide some ambient pads and unusual sound design timbres. So let's get started. The idea behind this track is to create a slow piece using mainly strings and piano, with an overall melancholic feel but a more hopeful ending. I'm going for that kind of vibe. I'm working in Logic, but I'm going to try and avoid using Logic's own effects plugins as much as possible, as the instruments I'm using have some great onboard options for tweaking the sound. So let's start by setting the speed of the track to 105 BPM and writing a string line using the string ensemble patch and the harmonics articulation. I'm going for a feel here of complex, unresolved chords until the very final G major chord. and I'll also be riding the mod wheel which controls the dynamics. So there's our string line, but the tone is a little bright for the start of this piece, so I can soften it a bit with the onboard brightness control in contact. Now let's add some simple warm piano chords. The Unicorda piano is perfect for this as it comes in three different flavours, cotton, felt and pure tone. I'll choose the felt variation and the warm preset. The chords that I've chosen here are designed to wrong foot the listener very slightly and provide some dissonance when combined with the strings. You'll also notice that the high strings begin a couple of bars before the main piano chords. This is a very popular technique in film scoring, which helps the post-production team ease into the cue more subtly. I can make the piano a little bit more interesting and give it some movement by using some onboard controls in Una Corda. So firstly, let's use the stereo image control to widen the sound stage slightly. Next, I'll add a reverb effect from the Mystique presets. Dark Cave will give a nice spacey feel. Lastly, I'll switch on the reverse effect, which will repeat a reversed version of the played notes at a synced interval, half a bar in this case. Let's add a nice sound design pad. Delving into Thrill, I can use the onboard preset browser to filter down the type of sound that I'm after. In this case, atmosphere, something soft with an ambient feel. Deep Ambience 3 should do the trick. With Thrill, you can set up the XY pad to be controlled by external MIDI. So I've assigned those to CC1 and CC11, so I can manipulate the sound as it plays through, shifting subtly between the two sources. So that makes a simple and effective intro for our track. Let's duplicate a few tracks and get to work on the next section. The piano is going to take a more active role in the next part, so I'll copy that and revert back to the felt warm preset without any of the changes from before. That gives a much closer, clear sound for the fast piano line. Now to break out the strings, starting with the string ensemble cello section. I really want a rhythmic staccato feel, so thankfully I can get the contact engine to do most of the heavy lifting for that for me. Switching on the repetition module and changing the beat division to eighth notes with an accent on the first beat means that I can just play in sustained notes and the engine within Symphony Essentials will handle the rhythms for me. Next 
Next, I'll choose the violas, a more unusual choice for a melodic string line, as you'd normally have the violins playing it, but that's what neoclassical is all about, taking classical conventions and twisting them slightly. I'll increase the reverb level, that pushes the violas back into the room and makes them sound a bit more cohesive. Adding a counterpoint line with the second violins fills out the range. Let's add a couple of staccato flute flourishes to that last section, and the arpeggio control is perfect for this. I'll set up a minor arpeggio, setting the direction to up down, count to 6 notes and speed to 16th triplets. Now it's as simple as just pressing a key to play an arpeggio flourish. Let's have the whole woodwind ensemble patch from Woodwind Essentials take over the melody in the next part. Transitioning into a D major instead of the minor makes the piece start to sound a bit more hopeful as it goes along. And you'll notice that I've doubled the cello staccatos an octave below too. So now to quickly finish off the piece by transitioning into a short end section, using a new preset from Thrill to smooth over the change. The cluster preset Soft and Dense is perfect for this. And I'll change the mics to the ambient versions for a softer sound and add a couple of different mutate effects. Finally, let's make a couple of small mixing changes, rooting all the tracks into a very subtle final reverb to help tie them together. One last tweak, a little EQing to brighten the highs, cut the mud around 500 Hz and roll off the lowest frequencies. I'll also place the orchestral instruments in their correct orchestral positions with a little bit of panning because even though this is a modern classical track the listener still expects a few conventions here and there. So I'll pan the violins towards the left, the celli pushed off to the right, the violas just slightly left along with the woodwinds. That opens up the soundscape very subtly. So that's my final short neoclassical track, which works well as a sketch of ideas, and I've put it together super quickly. For more information about some of the instruments I've used, head to the Native Instruments website, and thanks so much for watching.